Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 45, the midlife mm. crisis episode of the Split Screen Gaming Podcast. The current president episode. <laughs> the current president episode. <laughs> uh, you just, that just means this is going to be the worst episode we've ever done. It's basically hey, what that means. we don't get means. political on this podcast. And that's not a very harsh political statement, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. The occasionally weekly podcast where three lifelong friends correspond about video games from the comfort of each other's homes. I'm Chad Michael Ennis, and you are... Holden Depardo. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm Holden Depardo, and that's Chad Michael Ennis. Chad the Michael Ennis. We have a surprising episode. Racist? I don't... I don't, I don't know. know. I'm sorry. That yeah. might have been insensitive. Yeah, you're a very racist, horrible person, Chad. Uh, no, you don't know that. Nobody knows I'm racist. <laughs> That's true. That, right now, you're putting the accent on. Exactly, yep. And no one knows it. Um, this is my loser so white guy accent. We were going to talk about ports this week, because it kind of pertained to the Nintendo Switch event that had just happened, but then two crazy stories happened that totally deterred that. So we're going to talk about something else. Were we going to um, talk about... Did we tell them we were going to talk about por- ports? Yeah, we told them we were talking about ports. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So um, we're talking about the Xbox Game Pass updates, which are pretty massive, massive. as well as this massive in, in massively gaming... multiplayer online. It's not honestly a massive game. update. It's just more that it's a massive change philo- philosophically oh, no, for it's how massive. games get. It's it's huge. It's, it's the forty fifth episode. It's bigly. It's a it's, bigly. It's going to be the bigliest update. <laughs> Apparently, bigly is not bigly. It's you're saying big league. What an and he's idiot. just an idiot, and he said it weirdly. So. What an idiot. Now, to, to be fair, I say weird things in this podcast because I talk too fast sometimes. So that's, I guess, and we're all the yeah. same, Chad. You got a fast mouth, fast brain, slow tongue. <laughs> so um, we're also going to talk about that weird Nintendo Labo thing that got announced. Oh. And we're going to talk about why we don't play games for babies. I don't play baby games. I don't play baby games. I'm a man. Did you see that IGN video? I sent that to you. I, I played Pokemon Go. Yeah, I did see that video. That was really funny. Like, I'm a man. I wear cargo pants. I keep, you know, John Wick 1 and 2 in each big pocket. Yep. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, Brian Altano is a very funny guy. Brian but Altano. But before we get into the whole news thing and what's been happening this week i want to know what you've been playing this week chad but you told me you played a lot this week so let me share what i had to say first yeah you go first because i've got maybe like 400 minutes of material so go we'll do multiple parts of the podcast then what chad played part one what chad played part two (laughs) (laughs) just like three episodes tune in next week for part three so um i played two games one i can't talk about because it's our game of the month which is earthbound i've been playing that some more this week can you just Just let me know kind of your progress on it where you are I'm embarrassed, so I won't share anything. Oh, hold it. No, I have started school this week. It's been a busy week for me, okay? We well, have until Tuesday. <laughs> I have until Tuesday to beat the whole game. I don't, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight to get that game in there. All right, all right. I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, but I've been playing a little bit of The Witness as well. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I talked about that last week, I think. Yep. And I just want to say once again that playing that game on iPhone is a disaster because the game is still great, but the screen's too small to do some of the puzzles from a far distance. I thought you said the game looked wonderful on iPhone and looked kind of crappy on iPad. It does, but it plays better on iPad because you have a bigger screen to work with. It's still <laughs> choppier in the frame rate, and it definitely doesn't look as good um, in fidelity, but it's the gameplay that matters, and it plays better on a bigger screen because you can see more of the puzzle. Or like you, it's just easier to see like the puzzle and then a, an object to the side that you need to reference for the puzzle. Gotcha, it's just gotcha, easier. gotcha, gotcha. So that's all. That's all. That's all that I have for that's games played this week. All you played, played the same things you played last week. Yeah, pretty much. I'm very Yay. cool, Chad. I'm very cool, but not as cool as you because you played. I don't know what you played, but you played. Oh good god, stuff, I have a list. I have a list of oh, boy. seven Lists. things. Seven games. Seven games. But here's the crazy thing: I beat a lot of them as well. I started and finished a lot of games. So you, you should clarify. You had a lot of free time as well. I did. Yes. So heads up, last. Friday, so like a week ago now, I had surgery for what we thought was an umbilical hernia. Turns out that it was just when I got really fat as a youngin, and for most mm-hmm. of my teenage years, the fascia that is kind of like that base layer of muscle around each of your other muscles got real stretched out because I got fat, and then I lost a lot of weight, and there was just one segment of it that just didn't lose weight with me, and that little fascia so was you were doing your really workouts, loose. Right? And also, it sounds right. like I that's should exactly never lose right. weight. That's what, that's what I've gained Yeah, there from are that. so many things that they don't tell you about losing weight, like the excess skin, 
your fascia not closing up and you needing surgery to so they had to fold my fascia over itself and then sew it together because oh. it was just too stretched out mm, fun so it topics. mimics a hernia <laughs> so anyway i've been on short-term disability from work for 10 days this is day number six. Oh, you're still off of work right now oh yeah i go back to work on monday wow so i've had wow. a lot of time so you've definitely beaten earthbound Oh yeah, I beat. That was the first thing I beat was Earthbound, <laughs> and that was really easy to do because it was handheld, and because I, I was playing on the 3DS, so I was able to do that from bed. Because for the first couple of days, you're on painkillers, can't move. Ugh. So I beat Earthbound. Painkillers are not fun. We'll talk more about Earthbound on Tuesday. We're gonna shove this episode in at the last minute on the 30th slash 31st for Earthbound. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, another one I played was Recore. Speaking of Xbox oh, Game Pass. So that's a game I really wanted to play on Xbox because it was made by the people who made Metroid Prime, yeah. but apparently it wasn't great, is what I heard. Oh, it was made by the people who made Metroid Prime? I know it was, yeah, it was. designed and made by the guy who it, created the Mega producer. Man. It, I think it was like the producer of Metroid Prime or something like that. Something related to Metroid Prime is in that game. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah this is the, the guy who created Mega Man went on to do Mighty Number no. 9 and then ReCore for Xbox. Uh, not a good game. Not a good yeah, game at I all. Was bummed to hear that. It w- the the problem I have with it one it looks like hot baby diaper trash. It it it's looks it's like not on an Xbox One X. Here's the here's if the it thing. was it would look like the prettiest Shut game. ever. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a good iOS game. Oh, that's really harsh. So <laughs> I think like that's like it looks like a good 360 game, and then it looks like a good iOS game. Like that's so, like below it. That's, yeah, the, oh, that's you know like the character animations. For the well, dog and the character, like they're they're they would look like an iOS game. They're not super polished. Infinity Blade did look really good. Oh, that Infinity was my iOS game. Did look good. Yeah, it was a good looking game. But some of the pitfalls of that also kind of apply to this, and that's the textures for the environment. You know, like it's sand, and it's the oh. same chunk of sand just repeated over and over and over. There's no real detail to it. It's very sparse. The combat you can is... get away with that on the Switch. You can't get away with that on a PS4 and Xbox One. No, it's just not as acceptable. To be clear, this is a PS- I mean an Xbox One exclusive. Yes. Um, and the combat is really dumb. There's this auto lock on everything that you're supposed to shoot that just automatically jumps from target to target. You don't have to actually aim or anything like that, and you just shoot. It's like and push it's, the button. It's and so dumb. And the same mechanic of pulling out a core. Well, yeah, we played that for like maybe 45 minutes, and they're like, this is dumb and not good, and it looks bad. And there's aliasing everywhere. It's bad. Mm. But I didn't pay anything for it because of Xbox Game Pass. Which we'll talk about later on. We will. Stay um, tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> Tiny Tunes. Muppet Babies is coming back, by the way, and they're introducing a new Muppet Baby. Muppet Babies is even a thing? Oh, shut up, you young tiny baby. I Cuphead 2 that. player. <laughs> Not the say. sequel. Sorry. I read this. I haven't written as Cuphead 2 player, but I read it as Cuphead 2 play i'm like wait what sneak peek everybody uh tom was over <laughs> you literally had me for a second too that's funny tom was over and we beat a little over half the game together playing cuphead two player which is the first time i've ever done that and it was really it was it changes the game quite a bit okay i was gonna ask do they ramp up the difficulty they do ramp it up a little bit but a lot of the difficulty actually comes from confusing your characters on the screen because you look very similar <laughs> but one has kind of a red shoes and shirt and one's and a mug not a cup right you're right yeah Mughead. But it makes it makes um, bosses a little simpler, but it makes the platforming levels a lot harder because you have to you know, keep up with each other. Uh, you can revive each other. If you die, you can, like, parry off of their soul and revive them. But it was interesting. But here's the meat of it, the meat of what I played. I played and beat The Last Guardian. <gasps> oh, how it, was it? Um... So I did this because Shadow of the Colossus comes out on February mm-hmm. 6th, which is like yeah. two weeks, less than two weeks from now. And I love that game. And I was like, I got I to gotta play this so I can kind of feel prepped and get back into another Team Eco game. Mm-hmm. And this is a game that if you like and appreciate Team Eco's style and gameplay mechanics, you will enjoy this. Okay. Uh, especially Eco. Did you ever play Eco? No, I didn't. I played like half of Shadow of the Colossus. I never beat it. It's it's definitely more puzzle and platforming based than it is um, Shadow of the Colossus was only about there were 16 colossi and that's it. So you yeah. do is beat those. No, so I know it's, it's kind of like a um, you have like an AI companion you're trying to rescue and get right. out of this place or something like that. That's really all yep. I know about that game. 
and that's really what and that's made Ico. that game worth it for me. No, uh, it's Trico. Oh, it's tr- no e- e- in the game Eco. It's the, the character's name is Eco. Uh, the boy's name is Eco. Yes, yeah, and the girl's the princess that you're trying to save. Princess Eco. Preco. Eco. Trico in the Last Guardian is the oh, bird dog. Segway. It's a cat. It's like a mixture of like eight different animals, and it shows you all of them in the intro to the game. So it's like part deer, part ram, part alligator. It's not alligator. Something a duck, swan, bird. There's a dog in there too. There's a dog in there, mm-hmm. but this thing is that's the most brilliant part of the game is the AI behind Trico. Okay, I'm glad you said that because people were saying the AI was very frustrating. But from what I was hearing about it, it sounded like it's about the building relationship between Trico and yourself. And so his AI is kind of quote unquote bad in the beginning because you don't have a strong relationship with him. Yep. And then it gets better as the game goes on. Yep. And you're never kind directly of... controlling him. You're kind of like he's he's like a dog. You're giving him commands and hope to God that he follows them. And if you say the command a couple of times, <laughs> like no, stop. Whatever he's doing, you can tell him to stop, sit, go over mm-hmm. here, jump up on this thing, and then he'll kind of look around and then he'll be like. He might see what you're looking at. He might get distracted by a shiny thing over there. You're like, no, <laughs> stop it. Jump up here. And then he'll go and do it. So, so the relationship between the two of those is amazing. And that's really what kept me till the end of the game. There were, part, there were parts where I was like, well, you know, I don't know if this is enough to kind of go a full 10 hours. Shout out again to howlongtobeat.com because I always look up every single game. How long am I going to spend playing this game? It's about 10 hours, 10 to 12 hours. But that so relationship an hour was fantastic. Per year of development. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, this game does not look like or perform like it was in development for ten years. Oh, really? It still that's has... the cardinal sign of a game that's in development for ten <laughs> years is it plays like a game from ten years ago. It still has some of those like archaic control schemes, like Shadow of the Colossus. Like your jump is the triangle button for some reason. Still really floaty, not really precise platforming controls. Um, but if you're used to Shadow of Colossus and you like that game in spite of its shortcomings, you'll probably enjoy this as well. And visually, there are parts where I'm like, holy shit, Trico is the most stunning thing I've ever seen in a video game, and it looks gorgeous, especially a lot of the wow. environments too. And then there are times when I'm like, wow, Trico looks like it was out of a PS2 game. Ooh. Like, because it, it kind of varies, I guess. I don't know what it is. There PS2 is, is harsh. There's no way it's a PS2 game. I, I don't know. Maybe a good PS2 game, like God of War 2. Like, one that shipped after PS3 was released. Okay. But then, the only other, like, thing that was unacceptable was... And by unacceptable, I mean, obviously, I accepted it and played the whole game. But that was kind of egregious was the frame rate of this game. If you're playing... You don't have the choice. A lot of games nowadays, if you're playing on a pro system, you'll have the choice of better performance or better quality. Mm-hmm. So whether it's higher frame rate or higher resolution. Well, this game came out, like, what, a few months after the PS4 Pro came out? So yeah. probably it might not have had time to be optimized. And, like, we're not delaying this again. Well, it, you can optimize. it will switch to 4K if you're running on a pro and a 4K TV. Oh, it will. Okay. And they just don't let you decide if you want the better frame rate or not. That's right. 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 That's a shame. If you're playing on a 1080p TV, it will be 1080p. On a Pro, it'll also have a steady, solid 30 frames per second. But on my 4K TV, it <clears> dips <throat> sometimes into, like, the 15 to 20 range. I was like, oh, really? Apparently, on a regular PS4, it sometimes dips below that, and at, at points it just crawls. Similar Your to Mal- Shadow of the Colossus would on PS2 you ever played that game it, there were parts when the the slowdown was unbearable i played it on um i played Shadow of the classes on ps now so i kind of anytime i dipped i'm like oh the server is not working properly <laughs> well that's the ps3 remaster and they did obviously take advantage mm-hmm. of the ps3 to make that a little bit smoother so last guardian in general amazing relationship between these two and just kind of seeing their journey together and then the end of the game obviously wonderful yay and Dad if you cried enjoy many Team times. Eco, he called oh, me and he was crying. I didn't like, cry during that, but I did cry beautiful. during the next game. Ooh, you um, cried. Last Guardian, baby, I like it. It's good. Go play your Nintendo you Labo, en- baby. <laughs> <laughs> crying during your video games. If you enjoy Team Eco games, <laughs> I definitely suggest giving it a shot. Slight side note: I also played the Last Guardian VR experience. I yeah. saw you tweet about that. Yep, it was... Or Facebooked about it, or I whatever. Was, yeah, I think it was a Facebook The post. social... You social media about I it. I socialed it. You socialed it. Social... I had an ex-girlfriend who used to work at a, like, a spa workout place, 
and they sold this social drink and it was like <laughs> social and it had a butterfly on it and it's like zero calories gluten free you know there's already a social drink it's called alcohol well it turns very out very social drink i thought it was a social like energy drink like, oh i'm gonna drink this before my workout turns out that it's like sake and it is alcohol. <laughs> so the entire time we were dating, she's like, I'm going to go drink a social. I was like, okay, why do you need that? And then like a year into us dating, I was like, oh my God, what? That's alcohol? You've been drinking alcohol this whole time? What's wrong with me? Why can't you stand me? Anyway. Um, what about the children? I don't want our children seeing her mother drink sake. Shut up. So back to Last Guardian VR. There's. It was a very short, like, 10-minute experience. You feed e Trico some barrels. And it took them at least 15 years to make that. Probably. <laughs> you do some short, little, tiny puzzles. But then you also, like, get to ride on his back. And he's running and jumping. Like, that kind of experience was really, really cool. And I would love to see uh, a Last Guardian, like, VR or something like that in a game where you're just solving these puzzles on this giant beast. Because that's the scale of it. it was really cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's free for anyone who has a playstation vr you can download Ooh. that jeez man i am burping burpy speaking of surgery laughing crying um some farting coughing sneezing all very very painful last day of june so you cry it hurts you cry more because it hurts and you cry more it hurts and it's just this yeah. horrible cycle that's and then it. you're so sad, you're laughing about how sad you are, which makes you hurt more to start crying again. Yeah. It's a terrible cycle. Speaking of hurting because of crying, Last Day of June is what I played next. And have you heard of this game? No. I saw you mention this game online, and I had no idea what you were talking about. I... June was a long time ago. You're, <laughs> Shut up. You're lost. I casually heard it because I casually listen to things. <laughs> Sorry, people like casually converse about things, but they don't casually hear things. Yeah, um, I heard about it on, like, they had mentioned it once or twice on kind of funny games. People probably games casually daily, listening to this and being like, what do they say? I don't fucking care what these guys have to say about that. This is a game that I think Casual. we might get a little bit, very, very slightly spoilery. So I'm going to mark this in our show notes. What if I don't want the spoilers? Because I personally really care about mm, Last Day of June. You won't. You won't. If you don't, <laughs> if you don't like, if you don't like Gone Home and Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, you won't like Last Day of June. I never played Gone Home, and I only I played 10 minutes of Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Exactly, exactly. And I wanted to go back to it, but didn't because I cared about it that much. Uh, last Chad. Day of June talking. is kind of like a I'll stop talking. story. I'll stop talking, Good. Chad. You, you, Good. you can start going now. You can, you can go. Good. You Just can remember, go. I control the editing, and I can mute your, your track during this part. <laughs> <laughs> Chad has the power. So Last Day of June is a kind of like an interactive story, like short little puzzle thing. It was four hours total. But it's a story about... I love puzzle games. You're a puzzle game. Uh, a puzzle. First of all, it's absolutely fucking stunningly beautiful. The It's like this painterly impressionistic style in the like in the style of Van Gogh. Everything has this mm -hmm. weird painterly art style to it. It kind of reminds me of Game of Thrones Telltale game. Except okay, it's it's a lot like more game successful. Of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. The, the Game of Thrones Telltale game, like they couldn't run it looking realistic, so they made everything look like it was in a painting. Not just Telltale games in general. <sighs> yeah, they're gross. Uh, I mean, they don't run well. They're great games, but they don't run well. Anyway, Last Day of June is fucking gorgeous. It kind of helps with draw distance and things like that, too, because it does have trouble keeping up with draw distance, but it kind of blends mm -hmm. and it becomes paint. Oh. But this game, just top level, is about a guy who... The last day of June, June is his wife. So this is the last day of her existence before she dies. And he's reliving this day, oh, trying sad. to figure out... If this went differently, would she have lived? If that, if I could, uh, like the, for instance, one little scenario. Does it start Ashton Kutcher? It does not. Butterfly effect. <laughs> no. Like the I reason. Resist. I'm sorry. The reason they crash the car is because there's a kid playing with a soccer ball in the street. So he's now racking his brain, saying, "Okay, if I could find a way to make sure he never got a hold of the soccer ball, does that mean she lives?" So you play as the kid trying to figure out, all right, how do I not have the soccer ball? Oh, there's a kite over there. If I get the kite down from the tree and I go ask Grandpa, Grandpa has rope, and we fly a kite instead of playing with the ball, boom, we never crash. Except further down the road now, there's a woman who's moving away who's in love with you, and her boxes are all over the street. She gets out of her car. You swerve to miss her, and you crash still. I'm like, damn it. So there's still something that's going to crash and keep me from, from saving my wife. So you now play as her, and you're like, all right, how can I keep that from happening? Oh, I need rope to tie down this. But if I take the rope to tie down my boxes, that means he can't have the rope for the kite, which means he's still going to be playing with the ball. So you have four different characters that you're just trying to 
piece together what combination of activities they're doing throughout the day will keep your wife from dying. And you got sad at the end because you just failed miserably and could not find the right combination. The end has this amazingly sweet and so sad twist that I just like was ugly crying, breaking down. And the whole time I was like, ow, ow, my abdomen. Ow, it's so sad. Ooh, ow, it hurts. <laughs> so last day of June is fan-fucking-tastic. Hmm. So if you enjoy PS4? those kinds of games, uh, it's PS4 and PC. Yep. Mm-hmm enjoy those types of games it's very much worth looking into if you have an lg oled tv it's also the most beautiful thing i've seen on that tv so far but i can't also wait to watch coco on it because i'm sure that's gonna fucking i was just gonna say when you blast my eyes crying, out. i was thinking about me watching coco because i bawled my eyes out watching coco yeah coco was so good so last day of june and then the next one i really cannot wait for you to play this oh i'm gonna so no more spoilers so i'm gonna make a little note there note the surge do you remember the surge Oh, you played that. Oh, my God. It's my new addiction. Is it really good? It's so fucking good. It is sci-fi Dark Souls. That oh, is exactly right, cool. what it is. See, I had heard that, but it's such an easy claim to make. It so absolutely now that you, now is. Now I know that you're saying it, I trust you. It is, so you uh, it's taking your time with each enemy, learning his moves, dodging it. And How far into it, it are you? I've played it for about four hours. Do you want to stop hours. and make that a game of the month at some point? Uh, I, I don't think so. Because I'm okay. not going to be able to stop playing it. And unless it's next month's Game of the Month and you buy it. I'll, totally willing to. Okay. Totally willing to. Um, so there is a demo, a free trial demo out. I don't know how long, whether it's like the first hour up until the first boss. No, if I've, you like it this much, I'll buy it. I will definitely play the demo first. And I think you can carry over your progress if you buy it. It's also okay. plug on sale. There's a US, or the US PlayStation Network store has like a PlayStation Essentials sale going on mm-hmm. right now with a lot of really good shit, really discounted. So this is like seventeen, eighteen. Is it bucks. on the PlayStation Store, or do you have to like go to a website? And no, then... on the PlayStation Store. Okay. And when you go to the PlayStation Store, there's a code that pops up. It's like use this to get ten percent off your purchase. So I bought like four things. Use that code. Of course. Um, okay, I will play the surge. I'm excited you, you liked it so much. It's fantastic. Thinking, well, because here's the thing: is I was thinking about um, before um, Dark Souls Remastered comes out, is we play another Souls like game, and I know yeah. we both have. Um, shadows or lords of the fallen which apparently is not this a is great... this is the follow-up to like this is that studio's next game oh is the studio okay because i heard shadows uh, lords of the fallen was not super awesome no so this is yeah deck 13 made uh lords of the lords of the fallen i think that's right i got so excited and disappointed <laughs> uh, and then this is their follow-up to that it came out okay. in may it was also featured on the netflix show dark although yes I on that show that. they showed a split screen multiplayer feature that which they just created exist. for the show yeah but it is Dark Souls. There are a couple of differences. One is that high risk, high reward from Dark Souls, where mm-hmm. I'm going to go out, I'm going to kill a whole bunch of shit, and then I'm going to, like, I could keep going and get more, or I could go back and spend it, but then I have to go back and fight everything that I did before. It has that same thing, except you get a multiplier for every kill that you make. So the longer you're out, the more right. people you kill, the higher the reward. So oh, you're that's now really even smart. Yeah, you're even more encouraged to stay out that extra little bit before you go back. Well, because also what happens, too, is when you're playing Dark Souls and you're on, like, a New Games Plus or something like that, it takes so much longer to level up that there could be, a, like, a – that kind of increases that reward almost. I, I know it's going to be harder to level up, but if I can multiply and stay out longer, even those enemies are harder, it's yep. worth it. Yep. Hmm, interesting. There's also – the way you get that. gear in this is super cool. It kind of mixes that with the VAT system of fallout fallout where you can target their head their body their limbs their left arm right arm left leg it sounds like it make it a lot easier well here's the thing it's it doesn't actually like slow down time okay but you use the right thumbstick to to control what part of the body you're attacking when you attack gotcha okay and so if i want that guy's helmet if i'm looking for new helmet parts or that guy has a new helmet that i haven't seen before i aim for his head there are also parts of him that are like so there's like guarded parts that have armor on them and there are parts that don't so if you hit the parts with no armor you do more damage but you have less chance of getting the part that you want so if you have to if you want the part you want you have to hit that part that seems kind of counterintuitive so here's like, the i want to destroy that helmet if i want that helmet. i want that helmet so the more i attack that helmet and then there's the option for a finishing move if you do a finishing move you have a much higher that's the only way you can sever parts is by doing a finishing move oh you like rip it off of them Yes, yeah, so you can rip it okay. off, you slice it off, whatever it is that you do in the finishing move. And you have a higher t- – it's not a guaranteed that you're going to get that part, but the more you've attacked that part, the easier it is to rip it off of him. 
Mm. And if it's an armor piece, you get a schematic for that part. And then you can use the materials gotcha. you get from that armor okay. piece to go craft it. If it's a weapon, you straight up cut off their arm and steal their weapon, and it's fucking badass. I want badass. to go to there, Chad. I it want to go It is so there. good. I started playing it last night, and I played it until my roommate got home and she wanted to watch a movie, so then I played it. I woke up at 8 o'clock this morning, and I've been playing it since I woke up. It's fantastic. Apparently, um, there are only five bosses in the game, and I just got to the first boss, but just like in Dark Souls style, I got there, and he fucking in one swing killed my ass. I'm like, all right. I guess I'm going to go back and grind a little bit more. And I found little t- side areas that I hadn't been to before. It has the like weird ass platforming that you find in Dark Souls 2 to get to these items that you're like, yep. if you feel like, like you're can I go the there? Game. I just think I can go there and then you yeah. find a way to get there. Yeah. Yep. Um, the only thing it doesn't have is online. This is the game you cried online. during, right? This is the game I cried during, yes. <laughs> uh, it, the only thing it doesn't have is any multiplayer. So there's no like, you can't see someone's blood stains. You can't <laughs> That's... call in someone for a battle. The bloodstains doesn't bother me that much because I don't really use the bloodstains that often. Like, you should just be cautious going anywhere in a Dark Souls game. Yeah. You shouldn't be like, is this the dangerous part of the level? Let me let me find out. I would, like, um, read the messages that say but, take a step forward. And I'm like, oh, I would have never thought yeah, this. Yeah, like, this. you know, um, like the illusion walls, whatever they're called. Yep. Like, you know, or, this is one of those levels. Or liars. Cautious, enemy enemies. right up ahead or something like yeah, that. Yeah, ambush. Yeah, those are yep. useful. But I never really use the bloodstains. But the multiplayer is, I think, a very key Dark Souls component. Yeah, so this one does not have that, but it is still fantastic. I'm glad, I want to play this game because I really want. I love the ideas of just soul style games, not necessarily from from software, but I think it's a really great kind of style to a game, and I want to yeah. see more developers nail it. So I will. I will get that. Oh, there's one more thing. I really one more love. Thing. I really Are you love Steve Jobs. Shut up! Get out of here. One more thing. I really love the progression system. You don't have stats. I mean, you kind of do have stats, but you don't control them individually with each level up, like you mm-hmm. do in Dark Souls. Like, I'm going to pump points into my stamina and my strength. You instead just have an overall level. And that level, like if I'm level, uh, it represents my energy level. So if I have 20 energy, I can then fill that energy up with things I've equipped. So, like, to equip a heavy armor left leg, it might cost me three energy. Mm-hmm. So I can do that, and then I have a weapon that might cost me four energy to wield. So that's now seven of my 20 is devoted to just those two things. You also have perks, like the ability to use, like to get extra health or the ability to that's level like, up. That's very much like perks in Fallout. Yeah, but these perks also take out of your energy. So if I want, I might need two energy of that 20 to have additional health oh, okay. or to have this cool thing that happens like if if i build up this energy by attacking people i can use that to heal myself instead of a health potion interesting so yeah it's a really cool little uh so based on everything you're telling me uh game of the month next month is the surge, the surge? we're doing it Done. yeah if you guys we're want to get on top it. of it it's on sale until the 30th of this month what, what is it on sale how much did it cost it's 17.99 if you have playstation plus oh perfect that's so yeah. cheap that's I so think cheap it, cool. i think it is is it PS4 exclusive or is it PS4 and Xbox One? It's PS4 and Xbox One. I'm Good. pretty positive awesome. about that. So yeah, cool as shit game. Perfect. That's great. I have now spoken for, like, it looks like 13 minutes. So. Yeah, I was getting really bored. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all the games I played. Well, we're not going to talk about all the news stories we have, and we have a shit ton so of many, stories. So much to talk so- about. This is honestly, I think this is the biggest week for news I think we've ever had yeah. on the show. Yeah. There's, so we can see in our list here, we have like 24 news stories or something like that. Yep. A yep. lot of these are related to the same topic. Um, but we're going to save Xbox and Xbox Game Pass and Nintendo Labo for the end. Yep. Um, but since you've been talking so much and I'm so bored of it, oh, I'm going to talk myself Fucking, right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to casually listen to you while you read. <laughs> um, so let's start with some of the smaller stories. Um, Metal Gear Survive is going to have microtransactions and it's going to require online connection. So basically, Konami's like, cool. So people didn't like the fact that they were making a Metal Gear game that's not really a Metal Gear game. Let's do other things that our gamers really love, like microtransactions and a constant internet connection that's required to play, even single player. I mean, that kind of makes sense, though, because they're really advertising that as a, a multiplayer game and that there is a, a 15 to 20 hour single player component, but. No, they, they say it has – even if you're playing single player, you yeah. have to have an online connection. That's the part that bothers me. Obviously, if you're doing multiplayer, you have to always have an online connection. That right. I can wrap my head around pretty easily. But 
not for and it's not it's a 15 to 20 hour story that might be small for a metal gear game but that's not a short game i wouldn't no. say i don't that's, know i just like i feel like nowadays me. we're five years removed from the xbox one announcement that went so wrong that i don't think always online is a bad thing i mean enough people have connections and things like that well with net neutrality and all that stuff i don't know i don't know chad I'm going to save one particular story for you because I know you're very excited about this. I'm okay. Over that one. Yeah. Um, Roller Coaster Tycoon from That's Atari. That's the one. I was so excited. <laughs> um, they're seeking crowdfunding for a Switch version. I don't think any company should really be seeking crowdfunding because it's not like they're porting the game. They want to make a game from the ground up, and they want to raise between 10000 and a $1 million, which isn't even the full budget. That's a very for... wide berth. There. It is a, ver- a very wide berth. Berth delta. It's a delta. It's between a delta. ten thousand and a million. Yeah, that's a, that's way too much. It's also it's not a million. It's one point oh seven million. Oh, very particular. Yeah. And they said they are going to share revenue with the people who invest in the game. I just have a problem with a major company like Atari coming out and saying that we want you to fund this game. Now that's obviously not the full budget. Like if they get ten thousand dollars. They're still going to be putting their own money into it. If they get a million dollars, they're still going to put their own money into it. Yeah. But, like, what's that one million compared to the whole budget of that game? I don't know. It just seems very strange. It's just like the Shenmue thing that they uh, announced at the PlayStation conference a couple years ago at E3. They're like, hey, Shenmue 3 is coming to PlayStation. Also, there's a Kickstarter out for it now. Like, that's shit. Before I forget, by the way. Yeah. um, I need to make a correction from last week. Ooh, the New York Times would like to issue a correction. So um, that, that's me. I'm the New York Times. We previously reported. So we did a segment last week called Non-News of the Week. Yep. And it turns out it is actually, in fact, news. Whoa. The story was that the PS4 um, and the X and the uh, Nintendo Switch, in the same time span, so like February 22nd, 2014 to December 2014 uh, for PS4, and March uh, 3rd, 2017 to December 2017, Switch sold it, sold three times the units or something like that in You've Japan. You lost me. You, the, all the numbers and dates you just threw out lost me. Okay, so in a period of launch for the PS4. In the first eight months of both launch consoles. Of, there of we the go. launch of Perfect. both consoles. Yes. So my error was this. I assumed that the PS4 came out in uh, November in Japan, just like all the other locations, which made that number – of that eight month period skewed in the favor of the switch pretty heavily. I was wrong. It did come out February 22nd in Japan, which, Oh, so this was a Japan only numbers thing. It's Japan only number thing, but it still seems very strange that they would have launched that. No, what? Almost four months after it was out in America. Yeah. That's such, that's so the opposite of how it has always worked. Like Vita came out. It's because they recognize, the that was one of the things that they had mentioned. They recognize that Western gaming is a lot bigger than Japan. Mm-hmm. So, and everything is mobile in Japan, so that's why the Switch is doing great. Yeah. So all that said, I have another non-news of the week <laughs> this time. Okay. Um, I can stand by this one because it's a ridiculous story, I think. Devs say games sell as well or better on Nintendo Switch and other platforms. That's been said all of last year. Yep. Every single game that's come out that's an indie game says, oh, yeah, we sold this or more on this system so- than we did on anything else. The reason I want to – I kind of narrowed in a reason why I want to share these stories. That way you can find out from us and not click on an article that gives advertising revenues that encourage <laughs> right. this kind of horrible non-news behavior. So yep. listen to it here. Don't click on those articles. It's not really news. Don't click at – Do you want to share some stories? Jeff? I want to share one. God of War PS4 has a release date. That's the one I was, I was uh, saving Coming for Coming on 420. Ha, 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 ha. Insert pot and Do you really think joke. they can compete with Nintendo Labo? I don't think oh so. Oh, my God. Totally different audiences because this is for adults and not for babies. <laughs> Second, that story trailer that they released right alongside of it, fucking killer. Yeah, so I think I've been pretty open on this podcast about saying, God of War looks good, but everyone's really – over hyping this game a lot and that story just came out and i'm like okay shit that looks really really yep. good because that was what was missing for me is i'm like okay cool this has this, this relationship between the father and the son and i kratos is not an interesting character he's just not and i don't know any about this kid so i'm like that's just it sounds like that story's gonna fall flat 
and then this seems to add a lot of the kid has a lot of character it seems like yeah and they really are giving character to kratos for the first time ever yeah when he's like don't kill him like killing a god has consequences how would you know how would you know and he hasn't told his son who he is and all of this shit too like this guy is making shit happen god that looks good so 420 is a little later than we thought we thought march 25th ish. yeah but honestly at this point to come out and say hey guys in just about a month a god of war game is coming out would have been kind of strange yep so i think it's a perfect amount of time are you checking these off as we go i am and then they're yeah because i'm also checking them off and then okay, i was the noticing sinking and like oh yeah so how about you be the one in control of checking okay because i've been doing that and i'm like wait i just checked that why is yep. it unchecked again okay that makes sense i want to read one more i want to read one more okay i want to read one more hold on i gotta decide which one i want to read i want to read this one nintendo's gonna shut down Tomo in may two years after it starts did you ever play oh, Tomo? No. i thought it was boring as shit um, I'm upset because I never got the chance to play it because I never cared enough <laughs> to, to, to play it. No, I'm not upset about this going away because no. I just don't give a shit. Um, I mean, the only reason I played it was to get those Nintendo Platinum points that now I just never fucking spend at all because I don't need another Nintendo 3DS theme. But, eh, it's going bye-bye. It's going bye-bye. I'm not surprised. I kind of feel like there's a part of Nintendo saying, hey, let's just release something to see what the kind of demand we're going to have for a Nintendo mobile app sure and they go okay cool it, we we got the information we needed and we'll sell it off now or get yep. rid of it now so i'm not terribly surprised to see that go yep do you want to talk more chat or do you like feel like you, you say want to something talk more? you say something you say something. i'm allowed to say something right now sweet um 512 gigabyte micro sd cards Woo-wee! have been announced and they're likely to be compatible with the nintendo switch which means they are going to be compatible with the nintendo switch that i missed a poopy bottle <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, it probably gonna, laugh. <laughs> um they are probably gonna cost a lot of money there's been no price announcements on them but a 128 card a gigabyte card is 40 bucks and a 256 is around a hundred dollars so i'd there's expect also this... right now a, a 400 gig that i think runs close to 200 bucks so yeah i would say... i would expect this to be in the 250 300 range yeah the nice thing about it, I think, is that for people who have a Switch who want to get absolutely everything on their console, you can already do that with the 256. But I know. The games are not huge. They're not huge. But a 512 would put it huge. In, in greater parity with the, the other consoles, PS4 yeah. and Xbox One. It's going to cost you a lot more. You're spending $300 on the Switch and then double that for storage. But yep. for some people, that's important. I um, am fitting so far everything on the internal storage. Got Breath of the Wild, Super his... Mario Odyssey, Mario Kart, a demo for something I forgot. I don't know. I haven't turned on my Switch in a month. No, really, you can fit all that on there. I have a I have a 128 now, but I also have like LA Noir on there, which is also massive. bought a drone, bought a memory card for it, and then returned the drone. So now I have a 64 gig memory card that I can use when Bayonetta comes out. Oh my gosh! Did you just cheat? Do you cheat the system? <sighs> no, because I still paid for the memory card. <sighs> oh, I thought you said like the. I thought you were saying that the drone came with the memory card and no. you're like ha, 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 i'm not returning this no the drone okay. did not come with the 64 gig memory card gotcha i don't have ears 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 i noticed so you started this shared note and i noticed like the first hundred things are all nintendo and then you're like add anything i missed and i added like five playstation things whoa. at the bottom of it that you whoa, missed whoa, whoa, whoa. i had plenty of things in here that are not nintendo no but like a large portion of the, like i imagine you just go search google for nintendo and that's then not just how, add that's things not how it works it's not how it works chad the first two things are two stories we haven't said yet <laughs> which up. are alien games in development oh another crappy alien game yeah i would be excited the idea of an alien game is awesome is this from the people who it's made awesome. alien isolation it's from cold iron uh iron studios let me see they did they make that apparently the I first three or four hours of alien isolation is really great and then you shouldn't play the rest in fact i, th- yeah. I have alien isolation i should play that um it doesn't say but i don't think it was oh creative assembly is the people who made alien isolation mm, mm, um mm. but the development team includes industry veterans who've worked on other various high profile titles such as and these are actually big ones city of heroes neverwinter those are the least of the two never metroid prime 3 and bioshock infinite mm. if we could get a because metroid is based off of alien like uh shigeru miyamoto was always very open about that 
Uh, Nintendo in general is always very open about that, that like Ridley is named after Ridley from Alien. Um, but if they were to adopt an Alien game with the traits of Metroid, I think that would actually work pretty cool like that just not not like the the item collection kind of how that works but the isolation the atmosphere of the worlds that you're in yeah that would suit very well for for an, an alien game i think but yeah, ultimately I'm not excited about this game. and if it's good yeah exactly i'm not excited about this game because the reputation of alien games has been horrendous for the past two of them. are you kidding me colonial marines i'm just saying that was trash <laughs> The other story that I have on here that's before the Nintendo stories that's not Nintendo is there's a new Fable game reportedly in the works. Ooh, and I have a non-news story right after that. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, the new Fable game, so I think it's really interesting because they just closed Lionhead Studios yep. two years ago after they canceled Fable Legends. So Microsoft um, shut down the studio. And now they're giving the IP to a different studio to make a new game in the franchise. I think it's a, a good choice to kind of start fresh yeah. because that franchise tend- got stale and then Fable Legends was a complete like offshoot in a different direction that everyone's like, what the fuck is this? This is not what we want. But Fable 1 is pretty cool. That's the only one I played. And Fable 2, I think people liked Fable 3. Everyone kind of ignored. So I think it's kind of interesting that they're bringing that back. They definitely need more first-party shit. Absolutely. And I think that's a, a cool world. It could make for a cool game, especially with today's technology. Now, in, in terms of non-news, <laughs> IGN did an interview with Peter Molyneux, who created Fable, who no longer has anything to do with the franchise. And he says, this is what I want the game to be. And he just said a bunch of shit. <laughs> and he said, I highlighted a couple of things. He says, um, the Fable story hinted at a dramatic time before Fable 1, when the guild was founded. I don't remember the guild. It's been a very long time since I played it. But he said... The land of Albion would be much more primitive, the magic much more attuned to nature, and the combat much more brutal. He wants people to be, it wants to basically be a prequel when the guild was formed. He would love to see brutal, visceral, and fluid combat system that left permanent scars. He would like to be able to see players choose their familiar, a dog, cat, bird, or yes, even a goldfish that assists you with magic <laughs> bonds with you. And he thinks all players should have a horse that can train. <laughs> as well as their own home they can build from scratch up to an, ado- up to an abode fit for a hero. He also says he would like to see creature bestiary with hordes of small creatures, as well as rideable dragons and god-sized giants. So here's what's amazing about that story to me, is that when somebody says, I'm making a video game, like a company's like, we're making this video game, they're making it because they have ideas that they can execute right. already. Like, no one's going like, wait, Peter Moss is train horses? Or guys, get this down now. Like, <laughs> we're making this game. No one, did they, what developer's even making the game, apparently? Oh, uh, yeah. What's the studio they gave it to? Hold on. We're uh, looking for that. Uh, 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 uh. They don't care what Peter Molyneux has to say. They don't give a shit. Like, the story is right. only designed to upset people who are like, oh, that's what the next Fable game is going to be, and then really upset when it's not that game because it was never going to be. So it is Playground Games. Oh, actually, this might hint to a story we talked about a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Playground Games is the studio behind the Forza Horizon series. I think oh. I remember us... Because I think I, w- I think I remember us talking about Very there was a rumor, yeah, that there yeah. was oh they're working on a game and I joked that it was like a Cars RPG and you play as Lightning McQueen from Cars and you beat up other cars because <laughs> it's an action <laughs> RPG but all they know is Cars because of Forza Horizon. <laughs> no, it's a driver. He gets out of the car and just starts to pound and punch other cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Interesting. Cool. All Read right. me some. Oh, I'll talk about a little bit of PlayStation focused stuff for a second. I don't want to talk about PlayStation. One. More like lame station. One. Heavy, sa- heavy Rain, which came out on the PS3 uh, and is now has a like an updated version for PS4, has a reached a 5.3 million unit milestone, which is pretty impressive for that game. It's impressive, too, because that game came out so long ago. This is a weird story for me. Was it at like 5.25 at the beginning of so last year? Like, what was the sales ramp up? This what did is that what's look like? really interesting. So, 5.3 million units to date. That's over the both yeah. consoles. The really impressive thing is that this figure stood at 4.5 million in June last year. So, it's added almost 1 million really? more sales in just over six months. Are people really excited for Detroit, maybe? And they're like, oh, I've maybe. never played like, yeah, play one of these guys' games before. I've heard Heavy Rain's good. <laughs> yep. So, uh, that game was released in 2010, by the way. So, that's Quantic Dream is made that. So, they're making Detroit yeah. as well. 
Uh, another one, just a shout out to Sony's new Amiibo knockoff line. Have you seen these? <laughs> the Totaku? Yeah, I have. Oh, man. So they, they're basically four-inch statues. They look just like you would expect Sony Amiibo to look. Mm-hmm. And right now, there are set. There, the first wave is ten characters, and there are seven announced. They're ten bucks each. Uh, they're only bad. they're from Think Geek, so they're going to be exclusively mm-hmm. to GameStop, EB. But right now, there's Parappa the Rapper, God of War. There's Kratos. Although the Kratos statue, the head does not look like Kratos. It's really weird looking. Although I'm I want it. it. How do you spell it again? I'm looking this up. Kotaku. It's like Kotaku the website, but with a T. Uh, there's the Hunter from Bloodborne, which looks super badass that I want. There is uh, someone from Tekken. There's Crash, the original Crash. There's a Wipeout car from Wipeout. And Sackboy. So these are going to be 10 bucks. They come out on March 23rd, I think. March 20th. I uh, I want am... the Bloodborne one. I do too. Yeah, I want the Bloodborne, I want Sackboy, and I want Kratos. I'm bummed because the pre-order process, you have to pay separate $6 shipping for each figure. They don't ship them together, which is dumb. So I'm just going to wait until they come out am floored that there's not a nathan drake one well they have their that first wave still has three more unannounced ones so i don't okay, know maybe nathan drake has to be on uh, there. yeah maybe there's there'll be a nathan the drake one there will be a cat from gravity rush i think she'll get one yeah and then there'll be um nathan cole from infamous oh cole is it I nathan mean, cole porter it's not nathan cole no cole mcgrath cole mcgrath okay I never played the original two games. Or do you think they'll do Delson time. instead of Nicole? They won't do Delson. No. They won't do Delson. I want it. So they don't have any kind of like NFC functionality. Like Amiibo That's fine. Too, but I don't think people buy Amiibos. Anyway. Yeah, people don't buy Amiibo for NFC. I don't Although think I did use them in Odyssey. Did you? Oh, yeah, that's right. You did. Um, that Those are cool looking. I actually like those a lot. Yeah. Those are nice. I don't know if I would ever get one. I, I, I have three Amiibo. And I barely use them. Actually, here's the I'm, funny thing. I'm collecting Amiibo. It's stupid. Like, I just Do started. You really collect a- I started with just, like, Mario and Diddy Kong. And, yeah, I know you had those ones. You had Charizard and or Pikachu, Pikachu right? Pikachu and Link. And I got all those at first. And then I was like, stop it. These are dumb. You're never going to use them. And then I just, like, if I like something or a game enough, I'll buy the Amiibo for it. So I, like, oh, I got Charizard. And then, oh, I got, um, fuck, what was he? Oh, I got Bowser for Mario Odyssey. So I get the purple mm-hmm. coins. I also just beat Earthbound, and now there should be a Ness one showing up at my door sometime today as well. <laughs> so I'm that's, that's cool. Doing it actually, it's like a trophy for beating that game. Yeah, there we go, there we go. And I beat Bloodborne, so I'll buy that. And mm-hmm. did you beat Bloodborne? No, you didn't beat Dark Souls three. That's right. Oh, I platinumed Bloodborne. That's right. Did I saw two bosses left in Dark Souls three. I didn't beat the final boss, and I didn't beat the King on the Dragon boss. I'll help you. You can't because you have to go back and play it on regular and not New Game Plus. I'll do it. Okay. I mean, if you do it, I'll, I'll I, beat I it. I like that game. I like that game a lot. Um, those are nice looking. I like that a lot. I, I wouldn't buy them because the only Amiibos I have are Metroid or Samus. I can't believe I just said Metroid. That's like I had to <laughs> That was really bad. Um, I have the uh, the Samus Amiibo from, from Metroid. Um, and I have – I think I have the same link as you, the Smash. Yep. The Smash one, yeah. And then I have the one that came with Majora's Mask, I think, which was the um, – did you get the Skull Kid one? No, not, not the Skull Kid one. Sorry, the um, it, it was it came out the race at the same time as Majora's Mask. It was Midna riding Wolf Link. Oh, dumb. and you can use that in Breath no, that of the was Wild. For the Twilight Princess remaster. That's right. That's what it's for. Um, and I never got the Twilight Princess remaster physically, so I don't know how I got that. Actually, doesn't matter. Um, you can use in Breath of the Wild to have Wolf Link follow you around. I care so little about, about Amiibo, I've yet to do that. I've put yep. 300 hours into that game, and I've never done that once. Yep. So, all right. Next story. Non-Nintendo story, Chad. Ooh, science. The next Dragon Age will be a live game. This is a, kind of a non-news story for me as well. Yep. Because this is – did you read this one at all? Did you see this? I did, yep. So basically, the um, Casey Hudson, who um, is, leads Bio, um, Bioware, um, he um, was talking about Dragon Age and that the next game will be uh, alive. He says it will be focused on story and character, um, but what he means by live is that there will be ongoing storytelling after the main story. So like, oh, so there are side quests. There's DLC. There There's are microtransactions. DLC. This is yeah. an EA game. 
But also, um, Skyrim has been doing this. They have procedurally generated quests after you beat the game. So it's live and it keeps on going. Like this is I think what they new. I think what they mean with this one is it's going to become a game of service. Like there are going to be weekly yeah. quests you can go do. There's going to be new enemies that are going to release. It's another thing like all the other games of service that EA is doing that they just mm-hmm. want to keep you on the hook longer, keep you paying. Yep. And Dragon Age is a big franchise, so they can get away with it there. Yep. I don't think it's a bad concept necessarily. It's just not no, newsworthy. As long as they do it right, yeah. It's just like when they announce the game, they can say, hey, guys, and then we're going to be doing all these extra things on top of what we've already shown you. That's when you talk about that. Yep. But being like, working on Dragon Age, there'll be stuff to do after you beat the game we haven't told you about yet. And also, if you're an oh, EA, wait. if you're a studio publishing with EA, like, it's expected you're going to have a game of service model. So, yeah, no surprise Speaking there. of EA, speaking of Bioware, they speaking are... Speaking re- of Italy. Reportedly uh, focusing a majority of the team on Anthem. And yeah. it's going to be coming out early 2019, apparently. Yeah, and the pressure's on. The pressure's on. They need to do well with this game because it's probably their biggest game they've announced thus far. And it's not in a major franchise, at least. And um, I don't remember them saying it was coming out in 2018. Yeah, they did. They did? So okay. fall 2018. Okay. I never mind when a game gets pushed back, but I think the pressure is huge in this game. And I also don't think it looks that great to begin with. Really? I was, I was not like... Oh, I was so pumped for it. Eh, we'll see. But you didn't like Destiny. No, I didn't. I didn't dislike it. It's just not my game. I don't think it's a bad Speaking game. Speaking of Destiny... Ooh, I'm gonna Destiny transition story? us into PlayStation did this. PlayStation did this really cool thing. If you were signed up for marketing emails from them, where they show you kind of your your PlayStation journey of 2017. Yes, you're showing me this. This did is. Did you great. get one of these? No, I didn't. Dude, you messed I up. I think it's you because they up. know I don't like them and I like Nintendo more. That's it. That's actually didn't not check the true. box that said yes, send me emails. No, I get emails from them. Oh, one of what though? I think I might have actually. Um, I I do a lot of rules. In um in iCloud email, where I kind of say, like, oh, if I get an email from this, just delete it. Uh, and I think I might have marked PlayStation as one of those, because I don't really want a lot of spam emails. But gotcha. this does sound cool. So I just wanted to take everyone real quick over my through my 2017, because there's some really interesting, cool stuff in there. One, I've been pursuing greatness for nine years. So I guess I got my PS3 <laughs> nine years ago. Here's your journey through 2017. Uh, my very first game of 2017 was on January 6th. It was I Expect You to Die on PSVR. That's the really cool spy game you like. Uh, I played PlayStation for 319 hours last year. Over 41 different games. I played the most in February for 41 hours. The average PlayStation gamer. This is where I well, think February kind of interesting. was because of Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, which came out at the very end of the month. So you put in like 30 hours in a few days. Yeah. The average PlayStation gamer played 300 or sorry, 218 hours. Um so I beat that by 100 hours. The most active I month... destroyed that in one game. <laughs> <laughs> you did, yep. The most active month for PlayStation gamers was July, with 1.13 billion hours played across PlayStation games. Then they show the top played games that I played for the year. My number one game, guess what it was? Guess it. You're right. Horizon Zero Dawn yeah. 65 hours. I was going to try to pick a lame game, like a lame VR game or something like that, but I couldn't think of one. Number two. This one actually surprised me because I forgot it came out, or I forgot I played it last year. Number two is Final Fantasy 15 with 58 hours because I also wow. platinumed that game. And then number three, Destiny 2, 52 hours. Do you still play Destiny? I don't. I haven't, I've, I haven't played the new DLC yet. i got to play that. I want to. I have the time right now. I'm going to play it. Anyway, the most played game in 2017 across PlayStation gamers. Guess what the, fu- the top one was? The top played game? The top played game on PlayStation of 2017. Probably Call of Duty or something like that. Grand Theft Auto V. 1.13 <laughs> billion hours. Wow, not that I think it's a... That's just surprising because it's an older game. That's amazing. Guess what number two is- was? Just a second. Every top ten list of like top ten best games sold this year. Grand Theft Auto is still always on that. Yep, it's even still though it's always on that what, list. Six years old now. Yeah, six years old. Go ahead. Sorry. Number two blew my mind. NBA Two K Seventeen. I'm not surprised. Seven hundred sixty-seven million hours. That beat out Call of Duty Black Ops Three for five hundred nineteen million hours. Black Ops Three is still in the top played. That's not good for the Call of Duty franchise. Well, that one that one was out for 
11 months before the other one came out. Right? That was 2016's game. No, it wasn't. No? It was 2015's. Um, uh, oh, you're right. Infinite, Infinite Warfare. Infinite Warfare. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I earned 446 trophies, 7 platinums, 53 gold, 72 silver, 314 bronze. I'm in the top 10% of all PlayStation Trophy earner- earners. Ooh. <laughs> That um, makes Chad very happy. Yeah. I also I got 363 trophies in 2016 and 446 in 2017. Here's what I thought was really cool. It showed you how many free games you downloaded with PlayStation Plus and how much money you saved with PlayStation Plus. So oh, I that's, that's smart for yeah, me. I downloaded 57 Probably a lot free of money. games. 57 free games. And then in discounts, so like PlayStation has a sale, you get the surge for twenty bucks, or if you're PlayStation Plus, you get it for eighteen. I accrued sixty one dollars and four cents in discounts, which paid for itself. Oh, look at that doggy passed out in the sun. Oh, that's so cute. Um, I'm Context: My game dogs are sleeping next to me on the couch. Two. I just showed them to Chad. That <laughs> way, you don't just think Chad is. <laughs> He has happy puppy Tourette's. Oh, that puppy's so cute. Anyway, let's talk about PlayStation. And then the rest of it is all ads. Here's what's coming this year. Here's PlayStation Now, PlayStation View. But I thought that was a really cool thing to kind of show and celebrate your year. That is really good. I kind of actually, that's something that I wish Nintendo would just steal for their online service. And Microsoft, yeah. I think it's a great idea. Like, hey, here's your gaming history for the year. That's awesome. I love yeah, that. I also would love if that was just like available on your profile in the app or on the website rather than having to get a marketing email for it. Yeah, I, I really like seeing like how much time I put into a game or like what kind of rewards I've gotten. Like, that, that's, I like that kind of stuff. Because you kind of forget sometimes. Like, I was looking at my um, list on Switch of how many hours I put into games, and I'm like, holy shit, I put, like, 70 hours into Mario Odyssey. And I'm like, I just didn't feel like it was that long. I just had so much fun with that game. I love seeing that kind of stuff. Yep. Good, good stuff. Hey, it's been Um, an hour, and we haven't even gotten to our topics. um, I'm just going to shout some headlines real quick for a couple of these. One, I guess, well, this one's kind of big, but we'll just shout it and move on. Creative Twisted Metal, David Jaffe, his latest project is canceled, and his studio is having a lot of layoffs as they kind of figure out what they're going to do next. Um, well, Drawn to Life, their last, last game was not very yeah, um, big. Yeah, well, it was like free-to-play for a long time, and then it mm-hmm. like launched, and then it was weird. Um, Nintendo reaffirms that it has no interest in VR or 4K support, but... Shocking. Yeah, surprise, <laughs> because they have Labo. Uh, the next one, Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition is coming out on Xbox One and PS4 very soon. And there's a $20 upgrade to make it if you already own it. But I think this is really cool because of the way they're supporting this one. Mm-hmm. Rather than saying, oh, we have like Final Fantasy thir- or XV-2 and XV-3 in these separate games. They're just like adding so much shit to this one. There's so many side quests and like mini games within this. Not mini games, but like smaller sections and chapters. Mm-hmm that they've added and this one will add a whole new uh area whole new world you can now sail between the two continents rather than just you doing a cut scene you can fish off the boat you can do a lot of cool shit that's coming out march 6 and i think that's all i wanted to breeze through uh, i just had one i wanted to breeze through nintendo has no plans for additional arms content they are done making good new dlc good um, this isn't as bad news as I, I think people will take this. All it means is that we've added as many fighters and as many stages as we're going to, but they're still going to have like the party crash mode options and stuff like that. They're sure. going to keep supporting those for a while. I think it might mean that we any new content we would like to put into a new ARMS game, I think they might do one more ARMS game. Sure. I mean, it definitely saw enough interest right off the bat. Absolutely. Yeah. And I don't a, care it's about a good it, game. but I'm glad people do. I liked it a lot. It was a good game. It's not something I play a lot because I don't play a lot of fighting games, but it was a good game. But I think that's going to be a segue into, I think, the two most important stories of the week. Which one do you want to start with, Chad? Let's start with Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. Microsoft shook the fucking world up when it just announced that every single new Microsoft games published, uh, sorry, developed game, which I guess they would publish it as well, Mm-hmm. Um, will be available day one on Xbox Game Pass as well as its regular $60 release. That is fucking huge. The fact that when Sea of Thieves comes out, you can either pay 60 bucks to play it or you can, if you have Xbox Game Pass or pay 10 bucks, you can play mm-hmm. it as well day of. 
And that's going to be true of every single game they release going forward. That includes this year, Sea of Thieves, um, State of Decay 2, Crackdown 3. Mm-hmm. And then whenever um, like a Gears of War or a Halo game comes out. Or a Forza. That's going to be included too. Well, Forza will come out this year because it comes out every single year. Right. That's fucking huge. Yeah, that is that is definitely a groundbreaking change. Yeah. Easily. Um, Here's why it's necessary. Yeah, I want to hear your thoughts. I have some thoughts too, but go ahead. They they don't have the first party game. This is something we'll never see Sony do because Sony is all about these huge exclusive mm-hmm. first party experiences that uh, they have so many of them and they're all amazing that you're never going to see that 10 bucks get you access to all of them. But if you look at what's coming out from Microsoft this year, it's Sea of Thieves, Crackdown 3, State of Decay 2. All games that I have a passing interest for but would never pay money for to try out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have Xbox Game Pass. I'm now going to try and play all three of these games. I might like one enough and find out, oh, man, Sea of Thieves, you know what? It looked kind of dumb when I was playing, when we were viewing it, but now I'm actually going to play it and pour money into it. And... Yeah, I think Sea of Thieves has the most to benefit from this. Yeah, Because that's definitely. a game that's going to benefit from having a large user base. Yep. These are I... also, like, three games that we're going to bomb. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Quite honestly, I don't think Sea of Thieves these is going to do very well. None of them are going to make up the money that they need to be financially successful mm-hmm. in Microsoft's eyes. So kind of making them available like this and getting access to more people, more people putting money into Game Pass, like it all feeds into the same wallet. Totally. But also, too, someone who buys – so if you get Game Pass, it's like Netflix. It's the kind of thing that if you're a, a – even if, you have a, if you're a casual player, I think it's kind of one of those essential purchases – like if you kind of casually watch movies, you still have a Netflix account because you like the option of just being able to go somewhere and just watch anything. It's the same kind of principle, yeah. and you might not use Netflix for that month. Like sometimes I don't use Netflix for the month, but I still pay for it and don't mind paying for it because I just appreciate right. the access to it. And someone who buys Sea of Thieves might not buy Crackdown, might not buy State of Decay. So they're actually making more money, I think, by doing this because they made $60 on that purchase of Crackdown 3 – um, that's only half the year, but now someone's going to play. Now someone's going to pay like you know for the full year one hundred twenty dollars, and they might not have even bought either one of those, all three of those games. So even if they only really were going to buy Sea of Thieves or only Crackdown or only um, State of Decay, they've made twice as much in that year from that consumer. Yeah, it's really smart financially, but it also makes sense for the consumer as well. And if you pay the great 10 play. bucks to get access to Sea of Thieves, you also have access to Gears of War 4, all the Gears of War franchise, mm-hmm. Halo yeah. 5, you have Banjo-Kazooie, you have right now until the end of the month, Metal Gear Solid 5, Phantom Pain. Like, you get that plus the 100 other games that they have on the service. Totally. I think that makes Xbox Game Pass a steal, and you're right, it's an essential. Everyone who has an Xbox, I think, should have that. Mm-hmm. Um and then here's where it kind of differs is like from the Netflix model. Netflix is, oh, all of these movies that came out a while ago with some original content. This is mm-hmm. now like when Marvel's Avengers 3 comes out in theaters, it also hits Netflix day one. Like that's kind of the equivalent of this. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up that point because I think to me that what we've talked about is all great and huge. When I say this is groundbreaking, GameStop must be pissed. Yeah. Why would I – buy that game for 60 bucks at the store when I'm already paying for Game Pass and I can just play the game. This is a huge hit for physical games. This is a massive hit for physical games yep. to a point where I absolutely think that they're banking on digital only as the future. I think this is the biggest sign of a one of the big three pushing to digital only. This yep. is the first really big push towards that and it kind of goes to what um Satya Nadella was saying the CEO of Microsoft said a while ago I don't know if we talked about this in the podcast but he said he wanted to change the way people get their games change the kind of the approach to that yeah and I think this is an important step in that definitely where it's like hey you want to play go for it man if you don't like it who cares just like play one of the other many games that are on this pass they this did, is huge. They did simultaneously make a little announcement to appease GameStop and those retailers saying, oh, by the way, we'll also sell a six-month subscription card at GameStop for 60 bucks." So they still have a way to kind of make their money <laughs> off of Microsoft's digital goods. That's, I think such that's, a, that's, still, that's actually kind of more of a slap in the face. Like, hey, you can buy this service. Sell the service in your store that will make you obsolete in a little yeah, while. Yeah, sell the service that well, you won't have a customer coming back for another six months now. Yeah. 
Um, that's hysterical. That's yeah. really funny. Now, there are some things to, to consider as well. It, um, they're available day one, but Game Pass right now, it does have like a, a window of time. Like, as I mentioned, Metal Gear Solid Five. they said, all right, it releases in November. It's on the service for three months. Here's your three months to play it. So we don't know if all of these games will necessarily stay on the service I the didn't time. think about that. That's a good point. And I think they would, though, because I think all of their first party games have remained on there permanently haven't they the ones that have launched on it are still available on it it's only been around since may but there are still some first party games that aren't on it like master chief collection you cannot Mm -hmm. find on there do we know numbers and how many people are subscribing to game pass are there any numbers in fact in an interview phil spencer said he would not say numbers but um okay so yeah we have no clue how many people are subscribed just like netflix never releases a subscriber info i mean it'd be a maximum of 30 million and I don't think everyone who has an Xbox <laughs> yep. is is buying this. I'd imagine a good portion. I just can't imagine having an Xbox and not wanting the service. But I can also see I maybe... kind of if I I've thought about this myself too, and I thought if this same thing happened on PlayStation, would I subscribe to that service? And the difference I think between that and my PlayStation ecosystem is that I already own all of these games. You're just such an outlier though, I honestly don't I know, think that right, you count. Right. No offense, I love you, but you don't. Oh, right. This is this is not for you. So I mean, it is for you in but that like, situation. In that, in that situation yeah, it's if not you for own you. a PlayStation, I'm not going to get PS now because I already own all those games. I'm not going to pay. But to like, play if them you again. had the promise of every when the next when the Last of Us comes out, when Days Gone comes out, when God of War yeah. comes out, when Spider Man comes out, when all these big like Sony exclusive games come out, you just get it with your ten, fifteen, maybe twenty dollar subscription. You as a big PlayStation fan still wouldn't get that because you own other games so. already on the service. Because really? I'm so invested in that PlayStation platform and I have like a collector mentality almost. Like that's my platform I devote myself to. Mm-hmm. My Xbox is like, oh yeah, I'll play a couple little shit things here. Not shit things. I mean, the, no, the, the collector great, mentality but... makes sense. Like no one is yeah. like, all right, I have a huge DVD collection and then everything's on Netflix. Yeah. Like, like no one includes Netflix as their collection. Right. I don't yeah. care really about my Xbox ecosystem right now. There's not enough for me to be invested in it to care whether or not I own these games or whether or not mm-hmm. I'm, I'm subscribing to them. Yeah. And I think for a lot of new console owners, yeah, that's the best way for your money to get it. And then if you like these enough, another cool totally. thing about Game Pass is you get a discount on the game if you want to buy it. So if I play Sea yeah. of Thieves and I decide, you know what, I do like this, I get a 20% discount on Sea of Thieves. Yeah, that's worth it. That's heavy, heavily, heavily worth it. I yeah. think this is honestly going to be one of the biggest news stories of the year in terms yeah. of like its impact on the on the. Uh, this community. is almost as big as, if not bigger than, backwards compatibility. I think it's bigger. Yeah, I think it's bigger. Yeah, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, because this not, is going to change how people buy and consume games. Totally. Awesome. So, I, like, this is something that I would like to see other companies adopt. I just don't know what the financial feasibility of it is for their companies because Microsoft also is super profitable without Xbox. Right. Sony relies on PlayStation. Nintendo is, like, their consoles is all they really have. Well, Sony is definitely, I mean, they have their television and their all of their high-end audio. But it's and not. Like that, but it never turns a profit like PlayStation It never turns does. a profit. I mean, what, Sony Pictures had a billion-dollar loss or something like that? Like, yeah. PlayStation keeps Sony afloat, which is unfortunate because I think Sony actually makes good products. Yep, so. there's always just, like, a premium price tag to them. Yeah, they should get rid of that. Um, a story that is not as big in terms of its impact on the community, but it's still an interesting huge. story. Not as bigly is the Nintendo Labo. Is that how you pronounce it? Labo? I, I think it's Labo. I've heard I most people say Labo. Labo. Some people say Labo. I'm like, no, it's a lab. Because it's like building and Labio majority. Labo. <laughs> Labio. <laughs> Nintendo Labia. Um, so there was talk after the direct of like, Nintendo's going to do something else very soon. I think this is what that was. Yep. And they didn't want to bundle that with, like, here's Dark Souls. Okay, now here's Nintendo Labo, and it just right. wouldn't have the same impact. So they announced basically this kind of build, create, share kind of thing, like, like you know, um, creating your own content kind of almost. But you have these um, cardboard cutouts, and you fold them up to create things that then interact with the Switch. And so that hasn't really been talked about, but it seems like you can actually create your own creations. There's this thing. Uh, in, how they, there's you... this. There's this thing in the trailer that shows. Remember the guy who just kind of falls over in the. Little Let's describe cutout? what's okay. confirmed first before we go yeah, into like okay. rumored things that you saw on a screenshot. No, it's in the trailer. I know. <laughs> I know these things. Okay, yeah. Something. So you build these objects. It can it can go range from a piano to what they call a robo car 
or but it really looks like a centipede, <laughs> like a small centipede, <laughs> um, to a full on like robot suit thing where you have a backpack, like a little headpiece, uh, gloves, and f- even f- like feet wear for it, and you plays this huge robot be- battling up a city. And all of these real world things you're creating with the cardboard interact with a switch in some way. Right, and, so you use the Joy-Cons or the Switch and insert them yeah. into these cardboard creations to bring them to life. So like for an example, with a piano, you're really making a piano that has keys that push down, and you insert the IR sensor to kind of point inside the piano so it can see what key you're pressing and then change the pitch that the Nintendo Switch outputs. Yep. It's a really cool concept for kids. I, To be clear, I'm not, I'm not going to get this myself. And they did announce this is for kids and for yeah, people who are kids for- at heart. Which didn't stop everyone from complaining about how stupid <laughs> and for babies, things for fucking babies. Like, they literally said beforehand, hey, this might not be for everybody. But I think this was really, really smart of them to release this. Because I was thinking about this in the context of um, them wanting to stay to their Blue Ocean strategy. And I think how they handled that a lot better this time around with the first year was all about the hardcore gamer. Because they want it first. Blue Ocean people will buy it at any point. If it's something fun and entertaining, they can do with it. Get the hardcore gamer first. And I think this year is going to be a lot more about the Blue Ocean strategy and seeing unique things. And this is totally unique. Yeah. this is. I, I personally think this is fucking awesome. I, I, I do as soon too. as I watched yeah. the trailer for it, I sent the trailer to my brother and my sister and said, this is huge. Get this for your kids. Mm-hmm. Um. They're, the age range they're saying is around 6 to 12 because apparently some of these things take about two hours to yeah, build. Yeah, the piano takes two hours to build specifically. Because yeah. they're not just like cardboard that you fold up, but there's also string and yarn, and especially for the backpack. Mm-hmm. for Like you open up the backpack of the robot, and there's yeah. so much shit going on on the inside of that. The, even the, the fishing rod. They have a fishing rod. Yep. That, I yep. mean, you, it has this whole little box you put a switch in, and it's a yarn that you're kind of twisting up with the fishing rod. Like, it's insane. Yep. It's crazy. So I think this is an excellent thing for families. Like... Totally. Dad or mom and kid get together and they're like, let's build this thing together. We spent a couple mm-hmm. hours learning about how robotics and physics and when I pull on this lever, what does that do over here? Yeah. And then also having an augmented reality type experience where mm-hmm. what I'm playing with this cardboard thing actually has an effect in the game is super cool. Very, very cool. They, um, It is being sold for – it's $70 for the variety kit, which is comes to like – there's a house, there's the piano, there's the fishing rod, um, the robo car is all kind of in that package, and then the robot is its own package for eighty bucks, and it's basically all the cardboard cutouts as well as games to play along with them. Right. People there's are also a twenty dollar kit for like stickers and markers that you can buy to decorate. Yeah. People seem to be kind of some people seem to be upset about the pricing of it. I think the pricing is fine. Yeah. I have no problem with the pricing at all. It's sixty bucks for a Switch game. And the cardboard cutout stuff, I mean, I'm sure it takes some effort to print out all that stuff, make sure it's all cut out in kind of the right way. They also have to turn a profit on it. It's also not just cardboard. It's coming with all the other pieces you need to make the, the products. Like, I have no problem with the pricing of it at all. Also remember that 1-2 Switch was $50. Yep. And this, I think, is a lot more involved than 1-2 than Switch. I mean, cost of materials, you're looking at a sheet of cardboard that a computer is electrically cutting things out of that I'm mm-hmm. sure cost them a cent or two. But, mm-hmm. I mean, it's looking – it's not like cheap, flimsy cardboard. It looks like – Yeah, it looks know, like high-quality cardboard. There's some cool designs on it. don't have to buy that cardboard. Like, if you right. want, you can get your own cardboard, and they will give you – it's like they'll give you the printout or something like that. Yeah, so Nintendo's offering free printable designs for yeah. Labo. So you can – Get your own Amazon box, save, I guess, 10 bucks off the price of the game, buy the game digitally, and then print it out and color your own box. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a really cool thing because also these are cardboard. Kids yeah. are careless. They'll fall on it and break it. Someone will spill step on the on piano. It. So it's nice that you'll be able to like, oh, cool, this box that I bought toilet paper from Amazon in, we can now turn back into this piano Yeah, by printing off some stuff. Um, so let me get into the whole... You can make your own things. Okay, go for it. So there's this picture of this guy, a little cardboard cutout, like stick figure looking guy almost, like a silhouette of a person. And he has a Joy-Con attached to his back. And they kind of show him just fall over. And the first thing I thought was, well, that's a really boring game. Like, (laughs) Mom, look, he fell over. Look, he did it again. Like, that's really dumb. But if you look at the screen, 
there are these two squares, and it seems to be squares as options of how you want the Joy Cons to respond and do things. Mm. So I kind of think like they're going to say, hey, if you want to try to do your own thing with this, you can. It seems that the options are extremely limited. I'm sure, because that's straight up coding your Joy Cons. Yeah. Um, but it, it looked like there was some kind of like, hey, experiment a little bit. You will not be able to make something like the piano using that. Right. I don't think that at all. But I do think they're going to kind of allow you to do like maybe your own little thing. Like maybe if you wanted to do like the guy falling down or like something folding over or like just kind of like it, it's that experimentation and that kind of educational aspect to it of like, hey, like get the Joy-Cons to do something else that we're not offering for you. And it's like the tinkering aspect that I think is going to add some longevity to it. And I think also kind of plays into that create aspect because it's different than say like the create share play mentality of the, some of the PlayStation games from media molecule where you're creating your own level and doing everything like yourself. Like this is more of like, we're giving you a piano, make the piano. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where the create element's going to come from it a little bit. Um, but that's totally conjecture. I have no idea. I don't I have they, inside source sources. Did they mention but... that they're going to have extra packs in the future? Like, I they did said that they didn't. I no? don't think they said officially, but I think it's highly implied. Yeah, like if we don't see more of these packs at E three, I'd be very surprised. Yep. Um, one other little thing that I wanted to point out: the robot game, the eighty dollars yes. robot game. Is Project Giant Robot. It is Project Giant Robot, which they showed off on the Wii U and was an official title coming from mm-hmm. Nintendo up until Switch launched. Well, they and never they, canceled it. That, no, I think, they didn't cancel it. They just removed it from like their list of official Nintendo licensed titles, and now it is this game with a Nintendo Labo. Did um did we mention Project Giant Robot when, in our Vaporware episode? I don't think so. Or maybe no, that, we did. That, I don't remember. That was a long time ago. Yeah, because that was Vaporware. They never canceled it. They just kind of disappeared. Yep. Um, that's the only Joy Con or um, uh, Toy Con thing I want to. I would. Oh yeah, would, they call these things Toy Cons, which, which is, is like great. okay. I love that brilliant marketing on your like jo- yeah. Joy Cons. Put them in a Toy Con. Yep. Um, that's the only one where I'm like, okay, if that if that's not just a mini game that looks kind of fun, <laughs> <laughs> I might do that one. I probably like ninety percent chance won't get that. But if it's like, oh, Project Robot's actually pretty cool, and like you should, I might try it out. But um, I kind of feel like all these are going to be kind of just like small little mini games. I don't yeah. get the impression that there's going to be uh, deep gameplay. Right. It's going to be like Wii Sports, but. Yeah. In fact, that's kind of what re- this reminds me of. It kind of. Do you know whenever the Wii remotes launched and there were all those mini games and third party companies had a heyday with making plastic shells that you could put your Wiimote into a plastic tennis racket? Or put it into mm-hmm. a golf club, and then like it's like Wii Sports, you're golfing with a real club. I think that's kind of what this is, except you build the peripheral. It's mm-hmm. like a little third-party shell, but you build it, and they're complex and interesting and cool. Oh, yeah. Which also kind of goes to the aspect, too, of when I saw the Wii for the first time. Like I was also super young. I think I was super young. I was 13. Um, baby. And I was a baby. And I remember seeing the Wii being like, oh, you can do so many cool things with the Wii, the system's going to be awesome. Like, I was kind of pumped about it. This is the first time I've gotten that feeling from the Switch, where I'm like, I always like the Switch just for the portability and making yeah. a home console. That's been my big draw of it. But now I'm like, oh, man, you can do so many interesting, unique things with the Joy-Cons, and, and the Switch kind of combined with it, to the point where I'm like, they should have never released one to switch Oh, no. They no. should have never released that game. Not that I said they should have forced this game to come out earlier because obviously it wasn't ready, but... But that HD rumble and Dane Deasy's balls. <laughs> Shout out to Dane Deasy's balls. I don't know if we mentioned that in the last six months. <laughs> we must mention Dane Deasy's balls in every single episode. We gotta get on that. Yeah. We gotta get on them balls. Well, I think that's our episode for today. I think so, too. We didn't have any subscriber interrogatives. I, let me check Twitter real quick. I don't think we have anything. I don't see anything. Um, While you're looking for that, just for another reminder that Earthbound is our game of the month. We'll be talking about it next Tuesday, so look out for that Tuesday. there. Tuesday. Chad's already done with it. I got a lot of work to do, so yeah, I got to beat that game. Yeah, you do. Um, no, nothing on the Twitters. All right. Well, I think we've we've talked a lot today. That's been a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, we're talking Earthbound next week. We're talking um, Port 
as they stand yep. in 2018. We promised it this week, but too much happened. Mm-hmm. So we will see. If we you have reports next week. On Tuesday. <laughs> we'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> see you next Tuesday. Do you what get happened it? to Monday? Do you get it? See you next Tuesday. <laughs>